All right, welcome to module four of our SEO workshop where we start pulling everything together by building backlinks to our site and establishing our ranking and our authority and our trust with Google. So that is what module four is all about, building backlinks, because building backlinks is the number one factor for ranking. It's the number one factor for showing up in Google search. So if that's what you want to do, then it has to be done through building backlinks to your site. And so we are going to go through a plethora of ways that you can build backlinks quickly and efficiently to your website, how to get good quality backlinks and how to do it in a way that does not take you forever. Now, full disclosure, this is definitely going to be some work. It's not going to happen quickly. Backlinks are a lot of work to build, but they are so worth it because they get you results. So. Today, our goal is going to be to create 50 new backlinks to your website. Now, the number of backlinks that you are going to need is going to vary depending on your location. For instance, if you are in a small town and there aren't many other people doing what you're doing in your business, probably a handful of good quality backlinks would get you ranking. In fact, if your town is small enough, it could even be three or four backlinks could get your website ranking. However, if you're in a kind of moderate sized town or city, let's say 30 to 50,000 people, probably 50 great backlinks is a minimum before you're going to start ranking. If you're in a larger city, 100,000 plus, you'll need probably double that, at least 100 backlinks. If you're in a massive city, we're talking hundreds of thousands of people, then you are going to need hundreds, if not thousands, of backlinks. Let me show you a tool you can use to determine how many backlinks you need to aim for, okay? There are two free tools we're going to be using. It is Ahrefs Backlink Checker and Ubersuggest. We use these in an earlier video. Let me show you how you can calculate the number of backlinks you kind of need to aim for. First, we're going to go over to Ubersuggest and enter in your city and the key search term you want to rank for. So for this example, I've chosen Chicago Wedding Photographer. Now I've got my ranking sites shown from one all the way down to 100. And we're going to just take a quick look at the top search results because that's where Ideally, we'd like to be. So the first few are the not, the wedding wire, expertise.com. But what's really interesting is christinagphoto.com is actually above Yelp. So that's quite an achievement. I want to look at her website and see what she's doing. So I'm just going to copy her URL, head over here to hrefs, and enter the domain. Then I'm going to hit check backlinks, hit this I'm not a robot, and you'll see that she has a crazy amount of backlinks on her site. She has 6,000 backlinks, 189 referring domains. That means 189 separate websites have backlinks to her. Now, the rest of these backlinks might be a combination of Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram. It could be other places or multiple links from the same website. So we need to aim for 189 domains and 6,000 backlinks if we want to rank in the Chicago area as number one. However, we can look at a few other websites just to kind of get a more accurate idea. Stephen Koo, or Steve Koo is the next ranking wedding photographer. We'll check his as well. So remember, our first one, Christina had 6,000, whereas Stephen Koo has slightly less, 500, oh, sorry, 5,891, but he has more referring domains. So this is telling me that Christina's backlinks in general must be from higher authority websites than Steve's because he has way more referring domains and he is ranking second instead of first. Okay, then we can scroll down and let's just keep going. So you can go through and we're going to grab maybe number 18 on the list and see how Mark Trella is doing. So we'll grab that, put it in here, and we have 332 backlinks, 85 referring domains. Now this seems much less intimidating, doesn't it? 332, I can do, I can figure that out. So that will get you somewhere around number 18 on the list of that keyword, Chicago wedding photographer. So you can either decide maybe I should target a keyword that is less competitive or you have to get busy building backlinks, in which case this strategy is going to be great for you. We're going to cover all the different ways you can build backlinks and get started right away. So do that with your website, check exactly how many backlinks you need to aim for, set yourself a goal, and then let's dive into some specific strategies.
In this video, we are going to dive into backlink strategy number one, which is building local citations. So you remember how we actually set up our business in Google My Business? That is what is called a local citation. It's a listing in a directory that lists your business in a specific place. So to do that, we're going to head to whitespark.ca. Now, Whitespark is a service that actually allows you to pay them to set up citations, or they have this beautiful free resource here that we are going to take advantage of. So we hit resources, and then we're going to click top local citation sources by country. So this is a listing of all the free local citations that you can create depending which country you are in. <clears throat> so if you're in America, for example, we select United States, we scroll down, and we have a list of 50 local citation sites that we can sign up for. So bam, you already have your 50 backlinks, just go ahead and fill those up. Or if you're in Australia, let's say, you click on Australia, and they have 30 local citation sites. So that is backlink strategy number one. Go ahead, go through all of these, and set them up. Now, if you want to save yourself five or six hours of going through and creating accounts and verifying emails, you can use Whitespark's citation building service. They charge $4 each for generic citations and $5 for local. Local would be like a Google Maps or a Yelp listing, that sort of a thing. So you would be spending 120 to 200 bucks on your local citations, and you would save yourself probably a solid day's work. And they do it no matter where you are in the world. Your turnaround time, depending on what you order, is anywhere from one to three weeks if you order at this particular time, which is the beginning of December. Now, one very important thing I need to mention, make sure that your local citation information is entered the exact same way from listing to listing to listing. You don't want to put in different variations of your address or different descriptions, different info on your opening hours. They have to match because Google actually checks that and will either penalize or promote you if those listings line up. So for example, I've gone to my Google My Business page, and here's my address right now. It's 211 Upper Canyon Drive, Kelowna, BC, right? So I would not want to enter my address in a different citation as um, 211 Upper Canyon DR, Kelowna, BC. So even though it's the same address, because one says drive and one is abbreviated DR, Google is going to penalize you for that. So make sure that you enter the address exactly the same every single way, and you enter all of the other information that is pertinent in the same order, same way, same writing, same spelling, same everything, okay? So there you go. You can either do it the free way or the paid and faster way, whichever works for you. Get started, build those backlinks, and we will see you in the next video. Strategy number two for building backlinks, we're going to take a look at the clubs and memberships that you already have or that you could be signing up for, whether these are local business directories, associations you're already a member of, or memberships you're currently paying for. So let's dive over into Google, and it's going to be as simple as looking up your local listings. So for instance, I went ahead and I looked up the local city chamber of commerce. They have a business directory right here, so I'm going to click through and find the info where I can submit my business and get listed on there. Another method that I can use is to go into Google and type in my city and then just end it with businesses. Click on that and the link that I get will be a bunch of different directories. So there's Kelowna now, they have a business directory I could sign up for. There's growing industries in the Okanagan, I could click in here and see if I could maybe get my listing on here. Probably not because this is more healthcare and technology related, but there you go. Look at this. So there's a technology business, Accelerate Okanagan. I could maybe contact whoever wrote this article and say, hey, I offer drone photography. Could I be listed on your page and get a backlink just like that? So a lot of backlinking is going through articles and seeing, okay, could I get a link here? Would this person be willing to link through to me? Is it relevant? There's the local yellow pages I can add my info on. Um, here we can go. There's the Chamber of Commerce. And you just scroll through and find local business listings that possibly you can have yourself added to. You can also look at your statewide listing. So for instance, I put in British Columbia wedding photographers, and here we have a list of all the wedding photographers in BC. I can join this listing and become a member here, get a backlink to my website in my profile. Another place, here's for Vancouver photographers. I could join this site as well. I believe that's actually the same, wpja.com.
Now, let's pretend you're not a photographer because you're probably not. So I'm just going to say I was a bakery in Abbotsford. Let's scroll down here. Just type that into Google and see what comes up. So, for instance, Yelp is top search results. So let's make sure that we have our listing on Yelp if you haven't created one already. TripAdvisor, again, you can submit your listing there and get a backlink just like that. Three best bakeries in Abbotsford, BC. So there's a site called Three Best Rated that will take the bakeries that have the most reviews. Remember, we did our Google reviews video earlier. That's why this is so handy because most of these bakeries, most businesses you'll find don't have a ton of reviews. It can be pretty easy to get onto a site like this. So I would just go and have a look at the Polly Fox. So let's look this up here. I'm just going to see how many Abbotsford, see how many bakeries uh, reviews they have. So they have 200 reviews. So if I wanted to pass the Polly Fox in the review kind of stream, I need to make sure that I was incentivizing my customers. So for instance, I could actually have a little printout on my bakery that said, hey, do you want to win a free croissant or sign up to win free breakfast for a week? And then all they have to do is just leave a Google review and every month I choose somebody who gets a free breakfast or something like that, right? And that way you're going to get every customer that comes in there leaving a review. So foot traffic businesses, they can get way more reviews way faster simply because they're serving more customers. Anyways, back to where we were going with this. I could go into Abbotsford and look up uh, let's see, Abbotsford blog. That's a great place you can find backlinks as well. So for instance, Tourism Abbotsford, I could read their blog and see if there's a post that maybe I could get a backlink from. I could also look at different people who are blogging about the Abbotsford area if I have a bakery in this city. All I'd have to do is just reach out to them and say, hey, I'd love to send you a free breakfast just to try out and maybe feature if you find it delicious or something like that. And if I reached out to, you know, 100 different bloggers, you'd probably find that 20, 30, even 40 of them would get back to you and say, absolutely. And they'll do a full-on write-up of your bakery in exchange for some free breakfast. It's really that simple. Okay, so go ahead, find yourself some different directory links. Go ahead, find different places you can get the backlinks and start reaching out to people. It's really the action that gets results here. You need to take action to get those links. It's not going to happen just by happenstance, right? So go ahead, go through all of those and see how many backlinks you can come up with. You should be able to probably find anywhere from 5 to 20 easy backlinks by doing this strategy. All right, get to it. Hey, and welcome to this lesson. I'm so excited because inside of this one, we're going to talk all about what you need to do to get your work, your portfolio, your services, and your business published. We're going to talk about getting published, everything that is involved in the process. Now, I say this having gotten quite a bit of publication for my businesses over the years, and it's really not that complicated. Like, that's the beautiful thing. All of these really did not take that much work. It wasn't because I was an amazing photographer. My photos are okay. They're not the best out there by far, and yet I've gotten published far more than most photographers. How did I do that? Now, whether you're a photographer or not, it really doesn't matter. For instance, this blog that I have is all about creating presets and doing different editing tutorials, and I've managed to get published in that as well. Now, I'm going to show you this strategy, but before I do, I want to give you one fun fact that will encourage you, and that is this. Fact, getting published really isn't hard, okay? So the thing that is probably going to prevent you the most from getting published is just thinking that you're not good enough or that it's too complicated or that it's too much work or that it's too unattainable. Nope, it really, really isn't that hard. Really what it comes down to is taking action. So second fact, it's not the businesses with the best work who get published on that note. It's the businesses who actually reach out. And what do I mean by reach out? Well, I'm going to show you, but it's really the the people who are networking. It's those who network are the ones who get the results. No one's going to publish your work or talk about your business or your service or write you a review if you're not the one who instigates all of that action, okay? So you need to be the one taking action in order to do that. Now, one more thing. If you want to get published, you need to reach out to more people. And remember, it's never about what they can do for you. That's the thing you need to keep in mind when you're getting published and when you're trying to get publications and people to talk about your business. You need to stop asking yourself, okay, how can I get them to do something for me? You need to first ask and always ask and keep your eye on the prize because it's all about what you can do for them. If you can help somebody in their business, 
then they are going to want to reciprocate that in return. If publishing your work or talking about your business helps them in some way or you've helped them, they'll be so much more likely to actually reciprocate and do something for you, right? So what we need to do is remember that it's never about what they can do for us. It's all about what you and your business can do for them. So now that that's out of the way, let me talk to you about a few different ways you can go about getting published. In our last video where we were talking about memberships and those kind of links, I'd mentioned and just shown you a quick example of if you were in Abbotsford bake Bakery, all you do in here is we would just go through and you could even just search in your search terms and look at the people who are ranking. Now people who are ranking for this term, let's say I wanted this to be my number one search result, I wanted to be up here, I would say, okay, how can I get these people to feature my business. Now, obviously, if it's a bakery that is my direct competition, they're not going to talk about me. However, maybe it's a coffee house that I could partner with. So for instance, if I go down here, I'll probably find a coffee house somewhere in here. Old and coffee. Okay, a cafe and bakery in Abbotsford. Well, maybe I could partner with them if there's certain baked goods that they don't actually create. Perhaps I could reach out to them and say, hey guys, I'm just wondering, I notice you guys don't sell any um, handmade macarons and that's my specialty. I have a macaron shop in Abbotsford. Would you like to do some kind of a partnership, right? Get the ball rolling. And then what that might end up resulting in, if they said, yeah, that sounds great, maybe they would actually include me on their website and say, we offer macarons sold and created handmade by Ryan's Macaron Co., right? And then they would link to me down here, okay? Now that's one way to get yourself published. And what's interesting is you probably aren't thinking, oh, well, that's not a publication. That's just someone talking about me on their website. Well, the beauty of the internet is that really is all you need. Once you do that, you can then grab Old Hand's logo, put it on your website right up here and say, as seen on Old Hand Bakery or Old Hand Coffee. And you just post that logo there. Now, here's the beautiful thing, okay? One one thing you might be thinking is, well, I need to have really credible publications to publish my work in order for it to seem credible. Yes and no. So if you're seen by Times and a New York bestseller and all of these sort of logos that you're really used to, you'd probably think you get better results, right? Well, marginally. There was a study done that actually looked at when you look at websites that have this as seen on and if they have big logos and big names that everybody recognizes like Forbes and New York Best Times seller, all of that stuff, does that outperform smaller companies that people necessarily haven't heard of? And what was interesting is in this study, they found that really it didn't make much of a difference. So getting published by these smaller companies, getting featured on something like Old Hand Coffee's page is actually going to produce the same results in terms of social proof. And social proof is just when people see other socially credible signs that your business is worth trusting. Um, you're going to get the same results. Now in terms of backlink juice, obviously Old Hand Coffee is not going to give quite the same amount of backlink juice as say, you know, if Amazon or some really huge website were to directly link to me and feature me on their blog. If Nike featured me on their blog, that link would probably be worth more than Old Hand Coffee. However, with that said, if the key search term that I'm trying to rank for is Abbotsford Bakery, and I get linked to by a website that is all about Abbotsford bakeries or a blog that covers bakeries, that might actually be more beneficial in the eyes of Google than a link from Nike, which has nothing to do with Abbotsford bakeries. I hope you're following with me. Okay, so that's one way that you can go ahead and start getting featured and published. Now, we're just changing the definition of published, right? We don't need to be in some fancy print magazine. In fact, magazines rarely will feature a business. Most of the time, you have to pay for that kind of publication. And to be honest, the results are not as great as you would think because the thing about a magazine is they publish one run. It goes out once. Your business gets featured once to all these readers. And then after that, they throw away the magazine, they never read it again. Whereas if you are featured on the Old Hand Coffee blog or on their website, well, that link is going to live on for years. So everybody who sees it every single day will have a chance to interact with your business, okay? So these kind of links are actually even more valuable than traditional publications. Now, other ways we can get published. We can go ahead and, again, we're just gonna stick with Abbotsford Bakery. Let's go with Abbotsford Tourism, right? And we'll search for Aber Abbotsford Tourism blogs. And we go through, as I'd said in the previous video, and you just look for people who blog about the Abbotsford area or even people who do Canada travel blog, something like that. If you could get on one of these bigger ones and be listed as one of the top places you have to see when you're in Abbotsford, that could re lead to some great traffic. So you're generating traffic to your website and also great backlinks because a lot of these sites have really high PR ranking. So in the eyes of Google, they're very trustworthy. Okay, so all we would do is we'd find somebody who's blogging about Canada. We take a look at their blog 
and we'd see if we're a fit for them and if we could reach out and help them in some way. Okay, so they've got a 48 hours in Vancouver post. That's perfect. Vancouver is not too far from Abbotsford. We're going to get rid of this. Okay, what do we got? We got another best things in Vancouver. Vancouver. Vancouver breakfast spots. Oh, that is right on the money. Okay, so I could reach out to whoever this guy or girl is. We can go to the about. Okay, we've got Elizabeth. So we'd reach out to Elizabeth and say, hey, Elizabeth, I love your blog. I really in enjoy all of the stuff that you have. And this has to be genuine, right? You're not just giving compliments for the sake of compliments. Find something you actually admire or that actually helps you and make sure you reference that. Say, hey, really love this. We're going to hit this contact button if they have one. Okay, and I'd write her a quick message, and I would just say, hey, Elizabeth, love this blog. I don't know if you ever come up to Abbotsford, but if you do, I'd love to give you a free breakfast on the house and show off my bakery to you. I think your readers might actually be interested in it, but either way, I'd just love to say thank you for producing such great content, and I hope to see you around, right? Something as casual as that can really lead to a direct relationship where maybe the next time that Elizabeth is thinking about blogging about the Abbotsford area, she comes by because, hey, it's free breakfast, right? She checks out my coffee shop or my bakery, and all of a sudden in the next write-up, I have a backlink. And you know what I can do then is I can grab the Sidetracked logo and add it to my website and say featured on Sidetracked. Bam, we've got some social proof and we've also got a backlink. Now, you might be thinking as we're going through this that it's going to take a long time to do all of these individual reach-outs and coordinate things. Yes, it does. But it's not hard. It's really the people who network, the people who take the time, the people who reach out to more people. Because I'll be honest with you, I have done this with a lot of people. And you might reach out to 10 and only hear back from one. You might actually reach out to 10 and only hear back from zero and you have to do another 10 and then you hear back from two. So you got to do this consistently. You need to reach out to a lot of people to get featured. Now, another way that we can go about getting featured too, of course, is we can find actual publications who do that sort of stuff. And it's really the same process. We reach out and see what we can do for them. So, for instance, Elizabeth has her blog. I could say to myself, okay, how else could I help her? I could give her free breakfast, but what if I could do something more? What if I could even offer her readers a free bagel or something like that or some kind of a free guide or any number of things like that, right? Blogs like this and publications are often looking for content because she, Elizabeth only has so much time to produce articles, so many um, so many days to go and explore the Abbotsford area. What if I were to actually round up the top 10 places to visit in Abbotsford in 24 hours and I put together a nice write-up for her and I said, hey, I know this probably isn't ready for your readers now, but in case you were ever interested in checking out Abbotsford, I put together an itinerary for you of suggested places that I love to go in Abbotsford that you should definitely check out. I would you know, love to help if you ever want to feature anything of mine in on your blog or if you're looking for people to guest post, I'd also be down to write some more posts on the Abbotsford area. Just let me know, right? Those kind of relationships open up doors. It's not a direct, hey, will you publish me, yes or no. It's trying to think of how you can actually help this person, how you can provide them with content or with resources or um, some recommendations, and that will get the relationship going. Now, another way that you can do this as well is if there are comments in blogs. So let's say that I was, oh... I don't know, let's say I'm a dog trainer in Memphis, right? And I want to rank here eventually, but we're just going to look for Dog Parks Memphis blog, okay? Great. Or I could even look for Dog Lover Memphis blog, something like this, right? And so we go down here, and we'll just see if we have any bloggers who are blogging about this kind of stuff. That might be a little bit too niche. So maybe we just go for general Memphis blog, and we would scroll down here, and we've got an I Love Memphis blog. That sounds great. What else do we got? We've got Choose901, whatever that is. Dangerousbusiness.com, perfect. Memphis City Moms blog, that sounds awesome. So I would go down here, and let's say that I'm this Memphis dog trainer. I would reach out to Memphis Moms and say, hey, Deb, I'd find out what her name is, obviously. I'd look in here. Okay, there's more than just a Deb in here. There's many women. Okay, so I would reach out and say, hey, Erica, or hey, Crady, or hey, Memphis Moms blog team. I just wanted to reach out because I offer dog training in the Memphis area, and I was wondering if you guys would be interested in a free training session. 
or if your readers would be interested in a free training session. Um, if so, I'd love to kind of talk, right? You could reach out with something like that, or you could reach out with a different approach and say, hey, how can I help you first? And you reach out and say, hey, Memphis moms, I don't know if you've ever done a write-up on dog parks in the Memphis area, but I figured that I would put together a list for you. I have a dog training business, so your readers could also receive 50% off their first training if you'd be interested in offering that. Here you go. Right? Write them up the article, submit the content, and then see what that conversation results in. Now they might say, no, we're not really looking for this kind of content right now. So you need to make sure before you go into this effort that you're actually looking at the blog, you're reading their recent posts and seeing what kind of stuff would actually be helpful to their readers. You need to say, okay, how can I help these guys first? What can I do for them? And then create a resource, an article, or just give them an offer that's actually going to be helpful to them or their readers. And most of the time, you'll get really positive responses. They might say, you know what, we don't have any openings right now. We've got all our content filled, but the next time that we need somebody, we'd love to um, work with you, right? And that opens up that relationship. It might not get an immediate yes, but it might most of the time. Most of the time, you'll get a maybe or in the future. I will say that from my experience. You reach out to 50 people, you might find that one is good right now, and five are maybes, and six are, uh, I don't know, probably not, and the rest don't respond. And the ones who don't respond, you can follow up with. So I would go ahead, let's go with contact, partner. They've even got a partnership thing, so you have information on how you can partner with them. But let's say that I reached out to them, and I had an email with whoever it was, and I had this email address, and I wrote them the email, reach out, and I don't hear back from them. Well, there's this really great tool, if you're using Gmail, called Boomerang. It's a Chrome extension. And I believe Gmail might even have this feature starting to be built in now, but what, whatever it is, you need to get yourself a reminder tool for email. So this one is free on Chrome. You just click Add, and then when you send an email, you actually just hit this little Boomerang button in the bottom, you can either delay the sending or you can boomerang it so that this email will automatically pop up two days later after you've sent it in your inbox if they don't respond. And that just reminds you to follow up with them because you'll be surprised how many people, you know, all these people have their own blogs, their own businesses, their own lives, and they're busy. So you need to follow up sometimes to actually get a hold of them. And by the second or third email, you'll hear back and they'll say, yeah, that sounds great or no, not right now. But if you don't do that follow up, you won't hear back from a lot of people. So that's just a little approach that you can apply there okay now lastly one last suggestion we can go back to the great hall of pinterest and let's say that you had i don't know a fireplace chimney business chimney okay we've got a lot of advertisements i might have picked a niche that is just too niche okay backyard appeal modern pagolas let's go with backyard uh retreat okay now, I could look at different blog posts in here. So Light Up the Outdoors, that's a Lowe's post. How to Upgrade Your Backyard on a Budget. I just look for different posts like this, and I could create them for these blogs. So you don't have to just create content for your own blog. If you'd like, you can create something for someone else's blog that is in your kind of niche or a shoulder niche, not direct, directly what you do, but kind of related to what you do. So for instance, if you do chimneys, you could reach out to someone who does backyard landscaping and design and say, hey, I wrote this post on five different types of chimney restoration that you can do yourself. Uh, would you be interested in posting that on your blog in exchange for just linking back to my website or something like that? And that's an easy way to get backlinks and form relationships. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up because I think you get it. I might have drummed that home a little too much, taken too long to demonstrate. But I just wanted to show you in depth how easy and simple and straightforward this process is. It's about asking what you can do for them first of all, okay? It's not about what they can do for you. If you can provide value, provide a service, do something for other people, you're going to get um, reciprocated results. People give to people who have given to them. All right, so that's how you get published. It really is not hard. It is all about reaching out to people. Okay, all right, now just to give you a little bit more of an organizational framework, I've also put together this list of different ways that you can go about getting featured. So the first one that we talked about is writing guest posts for different blogs. So creating content based on your expertise, providing it to this blog for free in the hopes that they will link back to you. Now you can do this and you'll get lots of links this way. Another way you can do it is if you have a product or service that people would like to have for free, well you send them that product or service to review. So you say, hey, I'd love to provide you for with a free widget in exchange for writing a review on your blog. I would absolutely love that, right? You can do this all day long and most people will not say no to free stuff. 
Number three is provide a success story or a case study for someone else. So for example, if I were to head over to my website here and I went to signature edits, you'll see that at the very top here, I have these testimonials from all of these people who have used my products. Now you can do this with other people whose products you use. So for instance, if you're a baker and you bought an online course that taught you everything you know, reach out to the person who created that course and say, hey, in the past year I went from knowing nothing about baking to opening my own bakery store and it's all because of your course. I would love to be featured on your website if you're interested. Right? And I will honestly tell you from the perspective of someone who features other people all the time on my stuff that I love featuring this kind of stuff because it helps me in a huge way. So reach out to that business owner, anybody whose products or services you use and love, you can reach out to and you'll be surprised how often they will say, yeah, we would love to feature you and then you'll get a link back to your website in return. So another type of post is a roundup post and that is basically where a bunch of different people in your industry share tips or ideas or insights about a specific topic. And these are great posts because you can actually contribute to them and get backlinks pretty easily. You don't have to write an entire article. So for example, if you're a kayak instructor and you're doing research for guest posting and products and you come across a blog that is posting the 15 um, kayakers, 15 professional kayakers share their favorite uh, river route in the Pacific Northwest, right? And you notice that your favorite isn't mentioned, so you reach out to this blog and you say, hey, I love the article on the 15 Great River Rides in the Pacific Northwest. I actually teach instructing in the area, and I notice that you don't have X route uh, listed on your feature. Would you be willing to let me just contribute a short paragraph? And then below, um, you can write a tiny little paragraph about your favorite route in the Pacific Northwest for kayaking and then get put onto that blog, get a backlink just like that. Now these can be a little bit hard to find but when you do come across them, I wouldn't search them out because they can be a little tricky to locate but when you come across one, make sure you reach out to that person or that blog and say, hey, I'd love to contribute because those can be very easy backlinks. Now another one is a list post. So for example, any kind of blogs that list all the photographers in the New York City area or all of the bakers in the Shenandoah Valley area, all of the great hikes in the wherever area, whatever it has to do with your business, if they're listing businesses of your category, reach out to those blogs and say, hey, I noticed I wasn't on there. I'd love to be added if you wouldn't mind. And most of the time, because I get these requests all the time for wedding venues, for example, I have venues reach out to me and say, hey, I'm not on your list. And I say, I would love to add you. And I add them and I link and it makes my blog my product better and it also helps them because now they have a backlink. And lastly, expert testimony. So if you can ever add insight to an article based on your professional experience, then you are going to be able to get backlinks pretty simply. So for instance, we go back to Pinterest here and we look over in our bakery section famous baker's tips. Okay, so here's Weight Watchers banana pudding squares. All right, now this is super random, but let's say that you do health coaching. You could actually reach out to different articles that cover um, weight losing desserts, right? And you could actually provide your insight as a professional nutritionist. So you could go ahead, read through this directions, read through all of the nutritional information, and go ahead and reach out to this person. And let's say that as a nutritionist, I realized that they could actually substitute um, this powdered sugar with agave nectar or something, and it would lower the calories by 50 calories. And so I could actually reach out to, let's say it was Rosita who wrote this post, and I'd say, hey, Rosita, I loved your article on banana pudding squares. I'm actually a professional nutritionist. I would love to provide some free insight if you ever have any questions on an article. I'm always looking to you know, get my name out there and also help people with more insight. For instance, with your banana pudding squares, did you know that? And you provide that insight. And she might actually add that on there. Most of the time, you'll be surprised how generous people are. They'll say, hey, this was actually pointed out by a professional nutritionist that if you eat this at 10 a.m., you're going to lose 15 pounds and wake up a million years younger, right? So that is how you can get featured simply by adding your expert insight to articles that already exist. Okay, so that is six different ways for you to get featured, get started. Go ahead, start researching, start reaching out. Remember, it's those who apply the knowledge that actually get results, not those who just watch the videos. So go out, reach out to some different people, and get yourself some backlinks.